what she do, man? What do you mean, what she do? Well, you know, like, did she cry or something? No, man, she didn't cry. She just put the ring on her finger. Just like that? And you make it sound so easy. Hey, it was easy. So easy that now you're history, man. Hey, I got lucky, all right? It can happen to anybody. It can even happen to a bum like you. Thanks a lot, man. Look, when you find the right woman, all of a sudden you realize that for your whole life you've been living in black and white. Suddenly everything is in technicolor. And for the first time, you find out what it feels like to be completely alive. <laughs> and you wonder what the hell you've been doing your whole life before you met her. Here we go, man. Two chefs special. I am starved, man. The one without the shrimp right here. Congratulations, man. I really am happy for you. Thanks, brother. Like I said, man, I just got lucky. be okay, Molly. I know. <laughs> I want you to know that... No, Ian, don't say anything. I... You know, if you're too sympathetic, I think I'll just lose it. Okay. We could do this another time, Molly. No, I... I want to stay here for a minute. Seeing Nate's mother, I... Oh, I just... 
when I go to sleep. You'll be able to rest. I want you to visit me. Take a few days in the country. Ruby and I'll take care of you. Yeah, well, maybe I will. I don't really know what's going on. I don't know what I'm going to do now. I don't know what I'm going to do forever. So tell me about you. I Tell me what's going on. Same old thing. Nothing very exciting. No, go on. You tell me. Well, Ruby's growing like a weed. She's at that stage where she's getting into everything. I thought the older she got, the less trouble she'd get into. But it's turning out much different than I expected. And, let's see, the house is great. Oh, good. I think Ruby's going to turn out to be a real country girl. At least that's what I'm hoping. The other day I took her outside and she looked so different to me. I suddenly got this anxiety attack. And I thought to myself, is this my child? She had this look on her face. She looked so grown up, so wise. At that moment, I thought, I have nothing to teach her. Nothing in my life to enlighten her. No special information to prepare her. It'll make her proud of me. I'd just be waiting for her to grow up. And then she laughed and did this baby kind of thing, and that brought me back. I think your baby's going to bring you back, Molly. Okay, this has got to be it. Okay. Timex, wallet, one phone. Here goes sign right here. Hey, Garcia! McCullough! Get over here, you rat! Uh, excuse me. I was checking Nathaniel Hoffman's belongings. Just a second. Okay, what do you want? Uh, I'm taking Nathaniel Hawthorne's belongings. Uh, they said that we needed to speak to you. Did you fill out a form? What form? <laughs> Grimey. You gotta fill out a form before I can issue any personal belongings. Oh, uh, well, we already have his belongings. Well, how in the hell did you get him? Look, officer, ever since we got in here, we've been given the runaround. Now, all we want to do is get out of here. Look, lady, there ain't no shortcuts in here. You've got to follow the proper procedure. Now, we've just had a major bust go down, so you're going to have to bear with us. Do I make myself clear? Yes, you sure do. Fine. Now, I'm going to have to look him up. Name? Molly Dodd. No, him. Oh, uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne. Relation? Wife? Not technically, no. What, mother, daughter, sister, girlfriend? Come on, lady, help me out here. Well, I... Uh, we were going to be married very soon. It's a long story. Oh, that's great. You know, that's really what I'm in the mood for, a really long story. What, can't you see I'm up to my ears here? Hey, watch it. Watch it. Coming through. This is ridiculous. Let's just go. We've got all Nate's stuff. What's he going to do to us? I mean, I don't want to feel like a criminal trying to sneak out with Nate's belongings. And this is where he works. I don't know why you wanted to do this right after the funeral. It's too soon. You've been through enough. You sit down. I'll deal with this, Abe. Can't you see that this woman is pregnant? But she's just lost her husband, who, by the way, happens to be a member of the New York City Police Department. I thought you could give her a little more consideration than this. I mean, don't the boys in blue have some sort of sacred fraternity or something? I'm sorry, but uh, I'm going to have to take his belongings from you. You can't do that. She needs a court order to remove them. We're just trying to do this the right way. We didn't have to stop here at all, you know. Look, I'm only allowed to release them to his next of kin, the immediate family. That's the law. I considered him my immediate family. I mean, he would have been my immediate family if everything had worked out. Never mind. Look, 
I'm really sorry. And I, uh, I just didn't make the connection. We got a ton of people coming in and out of here. Not able to make connections. That's why you're a cop, right? Look, lady, I don't know what kind of bug you got up your skirt. Who's your superior? Who runs this place? Who runs this place? You know, please, could you just stop for a moment? Look, miss, go home. Don't worry about checking out his stuff today. It'll be here. Let's get out of this circus. No, Nina, you go. Molly. No, please, go. Whatever you want. Sure, you're gonna be okay. Mm -hmm. No, I'm fine. I'll drop this off at your place. Hey, wait, lady, lady, you can't do that. Don't arrest me. What is her problem? I, I really wish I could tell you something more. I just didn't get to know him all that well. I'm really sorry. she doesn't want to come home to an apartment full of flowers. I could run them up in a jiffy. Then they'd be there. Uh, this is a sensitive time. The flowers stay put till we get the word. Maybe we could arrange them discreetly in her apartment. So uh, when she comes home, uh, she gets a boost. Now, trust me, Jim, I've had just a few more years behind the door than you. I got some ideas of my own about maybe uh, doing things a little differently around here. You're still in the training program, son. Don't forget that. My condolences, Florence, Mr. Feldman. Thank you, David. If there's anything Jimmy and I can do, we're at your service, Mrs. Florence. Well, actually, you might bring out the flowers if you have a moment. What do you think, dear? That would be very nice. And, Davy. We have some food laid out. And, God knows, a bottle or two. If you have a minute to stick your head in, I know Molly would appreciate it. She should be along soon. Thanks, Florence. I'll get right on the flowers. One word and you're officially out of the training. One? Yes, one. Yeah, two. Where's the other member of your party? Right there. So, a table for two? No, a table for one. And another table for one? Yes. So put us at the same table, because it's so crowded in here. No, a table for one by myself. Do you have a reservation? 
No, I don't. Hey, well, maybe you could squeeze us in anyway. I'm sorry, sir. You gonna keep us out of here, man? We require jackets after 5 p.m. Oh, don't give me that bull. Besides, it's only a quarter of... Very well. This way. You. Please wait. I don't want you here, Uribe. He was my partner. He would have wanted me to look out for you. He would have wanted you to leave me alone. That's what he would have wanted. You think so? Yeah, I know so. Because I was in some life and death type situations with him, and you get to know somebody pretty good like that. Oh, I see. Well, no, I guess I really didn't know him. Hey, I didn't mean it like that. What you come in this place for anyway? Man, the service is terrible. You could always leave. No way, man. Besides, I'm starving. Good evening. Something from the bar? Uh, no, thanks. Whenever you're ready. Hey. hey, hey, what about me? You are not in my section, sir. Well, where's the waiter for my section? I'm sure he'll be along shortly, sir. Oh, man. Look, God, man, I'm really hungry. I mean, Maybe I could just come over and... I don't want you in my section. Don't you understand that? I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to even say anything. I'm just going to eat. I want to be alone. You can be alone with me. I mean, my ex used to say that being with me was like being alone. Well, excuse me, and I don't mean to contradict your ex, but I want to be alone by myself. Oh, you don't want to be alone, not by yourself, not at a time like this. Well, don't you think I'd better get used to being alone? Would you like to hear our special? Hey, can't you bring me some breadsticks at least? Your waiter will take care of you, sir. Where is he? Where is my waiter? Tonight we have the veal picante. It melts in the mouth. Your choice of pasta. And uh, everything on the menu is excellent. I'm really very sorry. I don't know. I, I don't have any idea. You want more time? Yes, I want more time. That is exactly what I want. But I don't want any food. Get her the veal. No, I don't want the veal. She wants the veal. And it's on me. And a salad. A mixed salad. And some pasta. Make it ravioli. And some rolls, okay? Very good. doing? Getting you food. I don't want food. Hey, you gotta eat, right? I don't have to eat. I don't have to do anything. Man, you got a, a baby and they're counting on you. I don't want to eat. And I don't want this baby. Hey, don't say that. Don't ever say that. Don't ever even think it. Baby, I want it all to be over. This baby is all we've got left of him. And I'm here to make sure that this baby gets everything it needs. Look, it's simple, Uribe. I thought I could do this alone, but I can't. Do you hear me? I cannot do it. So I just want it to be over. I'm not going to have this baby, and that's final. What kind of dressing would you like on this salad? We have. Oil and vinegar, we have creamy Italian. Just, just leave it.
So you ain't gonna have this baby. So what are you gonna do? You got a plan? You gonna send it back to the warehouse, huh? I'm sorry, I can't do it. You'll do it. You'll do it because you have to. Now eat your salad. You eat the salad, you eat it. Do it for your baby, just one little bite. You're the one that's hungry, you eat it. Right. I'm famished. I'm starving. I'm dying. But no way do I take one bite until you eat. Well, then you got a long way ahead of you because I'm not eating. Look, you got to this place, Molly Dodd. You got all the way out to this place that you ain't never been before. And you take a look around you and it feels like you're all alone. And you feel like you want to go back to where you were before, but you can't. You can't ever go back. You are here now, Dodd. And I promise you one thing. You sure as hell are not alone. Now you gotta eat. Because I can't eat until you do. And when I get upset, I get hungry. section. I'm supposed to be your waiter. Oh, uh, no, it's all right. He's in my section. He's with me. from now, who's your favorite newscaster? How do you feel about talking to members of the opposite sex? David Burney and Eleanor Mondale ask the questions and get the answers to these and other questions on Great American TV Poll. Coming up right after L.A. Law, next here on Lifetime. <laughs>